By way of background, um, the notion that competition policy ought to be one of the tools used to address the injustices of the past and the resultant economic inequalities has always been encapsulated in the preamble and the purpose of the Act, of the Competition Act in Section 2. Now, when you look at Section 2, um, one of the purposes of the Act is that it ought to be used to promote a greater spread, spread of ownership and, in particular, the increase um, of ownership stakes of um, historically disadvantaged individual or persons. Um, and then the Act goes on to, you know, define uh, HDIs um, as people falling into the category of those who suffered unfair discrimination on the basis of race pre-democracy. So when you delve into the legislative fr framework in more detail, um, what you find is that prior to the amendment of certain provisions of the Competition Act, and these amendments were in 2019, um, the Act required the competition authorities when assessing a merger to initially determine whether or not the merger is likely to substantially um, prevent or lessen competition. And if the merger was found to result in a substantial lessening of competition, to then determine whether the merger would, would be, could be justified on substantial public interest grounds. So you would know that um, you know, the five uh, public interest pillars which the Commission um, must look at when, assess, when, when engaging in this um, assessment. And these are quickly that um, the Commission must you know, determine whether, or, or rather determine the impact of a merger on a particular industrial sector or region, firstly, um, employment, second, um, the ability of small and, and medium businesses or firms controlled or owned by historically disadvantaged persons to effectively enter into, participate in, or expand within the market. That's the third um, pillar. The fourth one is um, the, you know, the mergers of, uh, impact on the ability of national industries to compete in international markets. And of course, for purposes of this webinar, um, the mergers impact on the promotion of a greater spread of um, ownership in particular to increase the level of the, the levels of ownership by historically disadvantaged persons and by workers and firms in the market. So despite the crafting of the Act, there's always been a debate about whether the public interest assessment is secondary to the competition assessment and whether the Act, the act could be interpreted to mean that in circumstances where the merger was found to be pro-competitive, then the authorities need not embark on an assessment of the impact of the, of the merger um, on public interest. In other words, if the merger was found to be pro-competitive, then um, there would be no need to justify it based on public interest grounds. And put differently, again, um, you know, why would you need to justify that which has been found to be pro-competitive, so to speak? So that was always the debate in the background. But notwithstanding this debate, the authorities always took the view that the competition assessment and the public interest assessment were separate, and therefore there was, in fact, a need to embark on this kind of assessment um, to determine whether or not the, you know, the, the impact of the transaction of public interest um, uh, the, imp the impact of the transaction of, on public interest, irrespective of the outcomes of the competition assessment. Um, this approach was subsequently then confirmed in the Walmart Mossmart case in 2012, um, as well as various other cases. And I think that this uncertainty and this debate is part of the reason that we have not seen the Commission prohibiting mergers purely on public interest grounds until now. Um, fast forward to the amendments in 2019. The Act was amended and... and um, these amendments took effect on the 12th of July in 2019. And in terms of the amendment, the Act has now categori categorically elevated the public interest assessment, placing it on equal footing with the competition assessment. And more specifically, the Act now directs the Commission to, despite its determination on the, public, uh, on the competition assessment, also determine whether um, the merger can or cannot be justified on substantial public interest grounds by assessing the five pillars, which I've already mentioned earlier. 